Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Erica and I am definitely here with Sandra as always. In today's video I am going to show you how to make a dog collar using a shackle. Now the shackles come in different colors. Um, I have the blue, purple, green, red and then I have a silver. And I believe there are a few more colors. Um, I get mine at PerryCourtGalaxy.com so I've had these colored ones for quite some time now and I wasn't sure on how to use them and I wasn't sure if they would be a good fit for a dog collar. So a few months ago, um, PerryCourtGalaxy.com was kind enough to send me about 16 of these shackles in the silver. and. It got me thinking of what I could use for them because they were so kind to send them to me. Um, I really wanted to do a video using them. So I came up with a um, dog collar design where I can use the shackle as a, the buckle of the dog collar and that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today. So to start this collar off, I am going to be feeding my teal through the last hole on these shackles that I received. Now the last hole on these is bigger than the other holes. The colored ones that I have bought, the hole is the same as all the rest of the holes. So for these colored ones, I really do like them. I think they're very pretty, especially this blue one. Um, I'm willing to be actually using a thinner cord to work with these. But like I said in the beginning, I received these. I thought that that was awesome for them to send them to me. And I really want to um, show you guys how I made uh, the collar for Sander. So, um, like I said in the beginning, I'm going to be feeding my cord through this uh, larger hole. And to start this collar off, I'm going to take my teal and I'm going to go through that hole and pull it through the other side. And then I'm going to take my other side of the teal and I'm going to go through the opposite side of that shackle. But um, I find it easier to use uh, a pericording needle. I think it's called a fit, but I might be mistaken. So I always call it a pericord needle. You're going to just go through that opposite side of the shackle and pull that through. And now you want to pull it until it's at the middle of your cord. And once you have it pulled to the middle, it's going to look something like this. You have this like uh, cord that's kind of going around the bottom of the shackle and you have your two ends coming out. And what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to do a double cow's hitch with your strands on the opposite side. When I mounted my work onto my jig, I had an extra uh, shackle that I worked with so I can um, have something to loop around my hooks right here on both sides. So I used another shackle and took took it apart and then put the ends on each um, end of the cord that I needed it on. Now if you decide to do one on one shackle and then do the opposite side on the other shackle if you're using two, um, just be aware that the ends of the um, shackle where you put the pin through actually has a small curve to it so just make sure that when you mount it on everything is in the right spot like it's going the correct way. Now I'm going to take my um, purple I already have it fused together so I have my um, acid purple and my um, 
Mind Bender Acid Purple uh, fused together and I am going to now taking my purple and using my pericord needle I'm going to go through both cow's hitches so I'm just going to go from one side to the other like that and now I'm going to pull this side until I get to where I fuse them together so you can see right here I have the solid purple on one side and then the mind bender on the other side and I want that um, fused spot to kind of be hidden so that's why um, I'm putting it like right underneath the cow's hitches so then it will be hidden and now I'm going to take my 275 uh, teal cord and I'm just going to go through the two middle cow's hitches just those two pieces right there and I'm just going to pull that through and bring this 275 cord also to the middle at the top. Okay guys, I made a small mistake. I forgot to put on my O-ring. Um, you can use a D-ring, uh, but I'm using a, an O-ring. Um, I like uh, how the cord goes around the O-ring better than how it goes around um, a D-ring. I can never get it to lie like really flat for some reason, um, and it always tends to move for me so I do like the o-rings better and I did forget to put it on you should put it on when you um, do your double cow's hitch tie on uh, I did not usually um, when that happens you have to take apart your work so you can uh, slip it on but what I did was I took off the uh, What I did was I unhooked the top part of the shackle on the bottom part of my work and I just have this part here where you have your holes um, on the side. I don't know what the, this part is called, um, but you can slip this on. And you don't have to take apart your work, you just have to reattach your shackle to each other. So I was saved here. So the first thing you want to do is put that o-ring at the top of your work and um, the first cord that I'm going to be working with is the teal. I'm going to take my teal that is on my right side and I'm going to go underneath this first cord and over the second cord. So I'm going to come up through the middle and then over. So I'm going to take it, the teal on the right side and I'm going to go underneath the first cord and over the second cord. Do the same on the left, but take your left cord and go underneath the cord that you just worked. So this is the cord that I just worked and I went underneath it. And then I'm going to go underneath the first cord and over the second cord. I'm going to take my mind purple that is on my right side and I'm going to go underneath all my work, up through the middle, over these two cords, through the o-ring, and then down again through this um, loop that I just made with the teal. So I'm going to take the mind bender on my right side, I'm going to go underneath all my work and up through the middle, so I'm going to grab it and pull it up through the middle. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to go through that o-ring and now I'm going to take my mind bender and I'm going to go under, sorry, through this loop that I made on the right side with the teal. I'm going to do the same with the purple that is on the left. I'm going to go 
underneath all my work and go up through the middle cords. Then I'm going to go over and through the O-ring. And now I'm going to take my purple and I'm going to go through the loop that I made with the teal on the left side. I'm going to take my 275 cord now. I'm going to go through the D-ring or the O-ring. And I have mine all rolled up. Hopefully it'll work out. Yes, it did. Now I'm going to take this cord and I'm going to go around those two horizontal teal cords. And I'm also going to go around the D-ring. Now you have your cord that you're working with right here. You want to take your bundle go up through the middle but you want to be on the right side of your cord that you're working with. Do the same on the left. So you're going to take your left cord, you're going to go through the O-ring. around those two horizontal pieces and then around the D uh, sorry and then around the O-ring and then you have the, your two middle long pieces you want to go up through those pieces you want to be on the right side sorry the left side of your cord that you're working with and now you can just pull it tight. Now I'm going to take my 275 cords and I'm going to actually go down through the O-ring with them right now. Now that we got our 275 cords through the O-ring, we really don't have to mess with the O-ring anymore. Which is nice. So we can just start this weave all over again. It's a real easy one. So you can take your teal that's on your right side and you're going to go under the first cord up through the middle and over the second cord. Take your teal on the left, go underneath your work, up through the middle and over that second cord. You're going to want to take your mind bender purple now that is on your right side. You're going to go underneath all your work and up through the middle and then down through this loop. Do the same on the left side. Go underneath your work, up through the middle, and then down through the loop. Next, you're going to take your 275 that is on your right side. You're going to go around those two horizontal pieces, but instead of this, um, instead of coming out of the right side of your cord, you're going to want to come through the left side. So you're going to come up through the middle and be on the left side of your cord that you're working with. Do the same on the left side, just, you know, the opposite. Um, you're going to go around those two horizontal pieces and you are going to come up through the middle on the right side of the cord that you're working with. And you can pull it tight now. Just make sure that the 275 cords don't cross each other. You want to make sure that the right cord stays on the right and the left one stays on the left. Next I'm going to take the teal that's on the right and I'm going to go under the first cord and over that second cord. Whoops. I'm going to take the cord that's on my left, the teal, and I'm going to go underneath the cord that I just worked, up through the middle and over that second cord. Take your acid purple that is, take your mind bender purple that is on your right and go underneath your work and then down through that loop. So you go underneath, up through the middle, and down through the loop. Do the same on the left. Go underneath, up through the middle, and then down through that loop on the left. 
take your 275 cord that is on your right side. You're going to want you're going to want to go over and around these two horizontal pieces but instead of going in the middle like you did just a minute ago you're going to go back to the right side of the cord that you're working. Do the same on the left go around those two pieces and then go to the left side of the cord that you're working with. And then pull it tight. And you're just going to start again. Take the teal, go under and over. Take the teal on the left, go underneath everything up through the middle and over. Take your mind bender purple, go underneath everything up through the middle and down that loop. Take your purple underneath, up through the middle, down to the loop. We're now going to take our 275. We're going to go over and around these two horizontal pieces, but instead of going to the right side, we're going to go to the left side. So we're going to do every other one. Take your left, go around. Go up through the middle and be on the right side of your cord. Do a couple more. So this is what it looks like so far. You can see there's a little bit of a pattern. It kind of reminds me of a chain link um, pattern in the middle. And then um, we have the two purples on the side with the teal on the sides and in the middle. I'm going to continue this pattern all the way down. I'll show you guys how I do my tie off and show you guys how it comes out. Okay guys, I finished my collar and I am at the end. I took it off the jig and I am just going to um, cut the ends off, burn them and I like to put a little bit of Gorilla Glue on the ends, uh, the clear non-foaming Gorilla Glue, to uh, just give it an extra security. The first thing I want to do is I want to sew in or weave in these um, two, uh, 275 cords so they are coming out of the back side of the collar. And I'm going to use my um, pericord needle. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take your cord and you want to go through the hole that is between the buckle and your work. But you also want to go through this um, loop that you have on the back side of your buckle. So... I'll put it through the first, I'll put it through here, and pull it out from the other side. And I'm going to flip it over. Once I have it coming out of the, so I flipped it over, and once I have it coming out of the back side of my collar, I'm just going to go up inside to this loop with my needle. Pull the cord through, so it's going to look like, so it'll look like this. You went from the front to the back and then you went, you know, through this loop right here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other cord. And now we can um, cut and burn the sides. So I go about a quarter of an inch up from the um, ends of the cord.
that one is a little bit too long. I like to fray out the ends of the cord. Um, I think it makes a better uh, cap when you burn it. And I'm going to be using a butter knife to squish the ends down. You can tug on them just one more time if you want. So you can see that they're nice and flat now and you're going to do the same on the opposite side. Once you have your middle cords cut, I have about an inch up from the buckle. I'm going to melt those and I'm going to smash them down too. And again, you know, make sure that they're tight. I'm actually going to do one at a time. So I have all my ends nice and burnt and squashed down and now I'm going to be using um, the Gorilla Glue. It's clear non-foaming Gorilla Glue and this really does hold everything in place. It's just an extra security. I've been using this glue with my leashes and collars for a very long time. You're just going to put some right where you have your cords coming down and you can put a little bit on the sides and now I'm going to use my finger to rub it all around. It does create a seal. Uh, the glue is waterproof so you don't have to worry about it coming off if it gets wet or anything and it's just an extra security to hold everything in place. Now lately where I've been living, this has only been taking about four hours to dry, but it depends on your humidity, how long it's going to take to dry. It could take up to 12 hours. It all depends on where you live. Now that you got your glue on, you are done. Just kind of let it dry. If you don't put the glue on, then you're completely done and you can use it right away. But um, like I said, I put the glue on and now I'm going to let this dry and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's completely finished. So here's my collar. It's complete. It's definitely thinner and all you have to do is um, remove the pin from the shackle and then you can put it on your dog's neck and just line up those holes again which whatever hole you're using and you can just put the pin back in and you're done. So here's the end that I glued. You can see that it's definitely shinier. It's dry. It's, it is hard there and I have no worries about anything coming undone. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. I enjoyed making this collar. It's um, definitely different for me because it's so thin. I do want to try and do some other uh, thin collars like this. and. I would like to thank PerryCordGalaxy.com for sending me these shackles to try out. I do like how they look on the collars and um, I definitely am going to try some new th uh, thinner collars using the shackles that they sent me. So again, thank you to PerryCordGalaxy.com and that's really it for today. So until next time. Take care and be uniquely happy.